So a buddy of mine gave me this box. He put a bunch of random stuff in it and he challenged me to craft something out of it. So let's see what's in it. Welcome to Storycraft Society. Craft Society. My name is Garmin. This is Thursday, so that means another episode is coming at you, and this is going to be a fun episode because my buddy Andrew dropped this box off at my house. I had no idea he was going to do it, and he just sent me a singular text that said, hey, craft something out of this. Good luck. So I don't have anything else to say. You get to go on this journey with me as we open the box, see what's in it, and then see what I can come up with to craft out of it. It might be great, it might be trash. Who knows, but we're gonna find out together. But this was a time long before Garmin knew that this would end up becoming a two-part episode. Let's go. Okay, so to start it off, interesting. It's less stuff than I thought it would be. Um, okay. All right, so let's just pull it all out here and start kind of going through. So here is a foam cup with a bunch of bits and bobs. We got some wire. This is an interesting thing. I don't know what that is. You've got drywall, like the things you like lock drywall in with. Um, oh, we got, okay. So we have some uh, wood dowels, wire nuts. I actually needed some wire nuts, so I might just keep these. Little, like, shelfy looking things. Another one of whatever this is, uh, like a knob. Little metal punch outs, I would assume from electrical boxes. Little pieces of chain. Uh, all right, so then, oh, okay, all right, all right, all right. So now we got a big cardboard tube, paper stuff, and then this. Uh, for like planting stuff in like a little planter box. Okay, well, this is not what I was expecting. <laughs> we'll see what we can do with this. All right, so as I dive into planning out this build, I'm gonna go through a couple of disclaimers of what I'm gonna be doing in this challenge, just honestly because it's the way that I'm gonna do it. So uh, here's what it is. Number one, I'm using foam. I don't care, I craft with foam. That is the material I'm the most comfortable with. Foam will be going on this build, whether it's you know, foam bricks or planks or support structures, I don't know. But I will be using foam and more foam than just like what's in this little cup. But to make it fair, I think I'm gonna stick only to foam core because that's basically what this cup is. So I'll be able to use this kind of foam, but maybe a little better. I guess the cup really isn't foam core, but I'm gonna use foam core. I'm not gonna use XPS, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it that way. And then the next one is I'm gonna obviously be using craft paints and paint brushes and stuff. I want the thing to look nice when it's done, like Mod Podge is obviously gonna be going on it. So I'm gonna use this to build the structure uh, along with foam and that sort of thing. So now hopefully a huge montage has happened of me planning this out and I'll have a great idea, something that I am fully confident about and absolutely will have no issue crafting and making it look great on the internet. All right, I'm not showing you this so that you can judge my art skills. I know that my drawing skills are crap. Okay, so here is the idea of what I'm gonna go for. I think I'm gonna end up doing this as the body of like a small like chapel with a cutoff version of this to be, you know, tower structure for the steeple. I don't know what I'm gonna do for the top yet. I'm thinking like maybe like crenellations or something up top there maybe. I don't know what I'm gonna do for windows yet. I might end up cheating more and doing like my shiftinglands.com windows, but I've got some cool things like this that could be like brackets for something like around the, the front door and all kinds of things. So here we go, let's start making this thing. Okay, so to get started, I took and actually had my dad cut this on a table saw. I am terrified of, you know, blades. That's why I like foam. I don't have to worry about losing my fingers more than an X-Acto knife cut or something. And big table saws scare me. So I had him cut this so that it's a little bit more manageable there. I cut this off just with a hand saw and then sanded it down to being flat. That will go something like this. And right now that's the plan. So. I'm gonna to try to predict what's gonna happen here. So I need to get these two pieces connected 
and be one you know solid piece. So I'm gonna start taking and do like a foam substructure underneath just to lock this thing in place and get it all solid. And then from there, I'm gonna start putting stuff on the outside, marking it up and that sort of thing. So that is probably what you're gonna see next. Hopefully I am right. All right, so we now have our piece to start looking at and seeing you know, where we are. This is the first time that I'm really kind of taking into account how I feel about the project so far. Obviously the first thing that I did was I made up a bunch of bricks to put along the bottom. I made these cornerstones that I used to imply you know, the actual kind of substructure of the building. I marked on where all of my windows and those sort of things went and then I also made the frame of where the door will be. All of those things said, I am now trying to take into account how I feel about the progression of the piece. And right now I'm thinking that the way the blocks are down along the bottom, they're not broken up enough. It just looks like a big flat surface. So I'm trying to decide whether the next step is to put some kind of vertical something to break this up or decide whether I need it. I don't really know. So actually, I think I'm gonna take a break. I think I'm gonna take an hour or two, get away from it, and come back to it and make a decision later. Hey everybody, sorry for pausing the video. Hopefully you're enjoying it so far. I just wanted to take a quick second to remind you about my Craft of the Day series. The whole premise of my Craft of the Day segment is that y'all have given me so many kind words and I feel like it's only fair that I send them back. When you post a picture of a craft that you've made on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, just tag the Story Craft Society in it. I'm gonna go through those each week and then I'll pick one of those crafts that I like. It could be something that someone put a lot of time into or it could be something that's just really impressive. I don't really have a criteria for that yet, but it's just something that jumps out at me and deserves attention. And then what I'm going to do is at the end of my videos each week, I'm going to take a few minutes and just talk about what I like about it and obviously show pictures and stuff. So if that's something that you'd be interested in, tag us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Be sure to like this video if you like this content. Definitely comment and subscribe. Also, that helps the channel and all that stuff. But you knew that. Let's jump back to the video. I got it, so I don't even really have good lighting set up. I didn't put a mic on or anything because it hit me in my time of taking a break, not even in a baseball tee, not filming for the channel right now, but I realized that I have these logs and the logs are the ones that I used on the cabin build from like a month or so ago. I just had them lying around. I didn't throw them away because I knew that they'd come in handy eventually. They'll be perfect for running like vertical supports that will break up the look of the outside of this thing. I mean, I'm, I'm super pumped. This is exactly what I was looking for. So let's go, right? Get them put in place. This is awesome. Welcome to the next day. And I've got some stuff to fill y'all in on. So I worked on this a little bit last night. I didn't film, but it was because I couldn't sleep. And so I was just kind of up and kicking around and figured I'd do something productive. So here's the stuff that I got done. Probably the biggest thing is that I got the substructure for the roof done. I got the tower piece glued in place. I got these little fascia boards to frame up the front and then the most noticeable thing probably is that I got the windows all framed in. So with that done, what is next? Well, I think the first thing that I've got to do is I've got to get all of the wood stripping on the sides of the walls. Once that's done, we move on to doing the strips on the roof. Once that's done, then we move on to the strips on the tower. I still don't know what I'm doing up here yet. That's still, that's still up for debate, but we'll see. All right, let's jump into it. Tell me 
time to jump into a project update. The thing is starting to really, really come together. And I think what's so exciting about this I guess challenge in general is that it's making me craft in a way that I think it's gonna end up looking just so much different than anything I've ever made before. Even though I'm using the same techniques that I used on other buildings that I've built, I just feel like this little chapel feels different. I don't know, this might be me just totally going off the rails, obviously being excited about a new project, but anyway, all of that said, I have decided to abandon the tower structure that I was gonna go with. So my original plan was to have it be flat on top and maybe crenellations around it. That certainly would be simpler, but I'm starting to notice that now, other than the substructure, I'm having a bit of an issue because I'm not using a lot of the extra pieces that I got in this box. So I wanna fix that and I wanna start using more of them. So what I'm going to do is do a bell tower. So the new plan is to do something like this, where you've got the circular tower that comes up to a little bit of a peaked roof that comes to a flat top. And then I'll maybe use like these pieces. And then my idea was to try and use this to make a bell. I still don't know how that'll work yet. That's the new plan and hopefully can get that part of the substructure done. Let's go. Okay, so real quick, while I am on working on the roof, I'm gonna talk about how I did this top cap here. I'll be completely honest, I really can't figure out a good way to do roofs that are circular. Conical, I guess is the right term. I hate doing shingles, they just take forever, and I feel like they don't look that much better than doing like the planking or something a little bit easier to do. But yet everything else that I do, I just end up feeling like it doesn't look great. And obviously these are not great, but these are certainly a little different. So I'm gonna talk about how I did these. If you've got any suggestions to, you know, better ways to do conical roofs other than shingles, if you do shingles and have an easy way to do those, let me know also, but drop that stuff down in the comments below. Okay, so here's what we do. The first thing you do is you take your strip that you're gonna be using as your like plank, so then you cut these all the way across the back of it. That'll end up being the top. What this does is it allows the piece to wrap a little bit better around the cone. Then you just put your hot glue on, place it over top of the previous row, uh, and the trick here is just to make sure that you cover up all the little V marks. I mean, easy enough to do, a little frustrating. It looks okay. I don't think it looks great, but Real quick, I'm gonna knock the rest of this out and then I'm gonna start working on the top, which is where the bell will go. All right, so with the roof done, the next challenge is doing the bell. Now, originally in my drawing, I kind of sketched it out so that there would be a little roof over top of the bell, but the more I'm looking at it this way, I'm starting to feel like it looks kind of rustic in the fact that like just the bell would be what's hanging up here. So I think I'm gonna stick with that. So what I need to do now is make the bell. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take wire and I'm gonna run that across my two dowel rods here. And then I'm gonna take one of these wire nuts, paint it up, hopefully to look like a bell. And then that will be glued up onto the wire. Hopefully that will look nice. And then I'm gonna run a string to look like a rope that's running down. All right, so now that the bell tower is done, we need to move on to the door. And I thought that this was actually a really good opportunity to talk about, I guess, material usage. I'm not really sure the right technical term for this. So on this piece already, we know we have a lot of wood texture. We've got the big log posts, we've got the wood paneling that's on the side, we've got the wood roof, we've got the wood tower. We know that wood is already so prevalent on this piece, but specifically we can get kind of down nitty gritty and say it is foam textured to look like wood. Now we have the door to do still, and the door I'm gonna want to be made out of wood as well. In the painting stage, I could certainly paint it to be different. That's definitely an option. But I think there's a step that we can go further uh, to make that really stand out. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use craft sticks to make the door. So not only am I going to get the visual difference of it painting different, but actually it's going to be a different texture even though it still will look like wood 
just differently. And I think that that material diversity is going to draw your eye to this door and it's going to make it separate, feel different than all of the wood on the rest of the piece. So that's something for you to try out. If it works for you, awesome. I think it's definitely gonna work for me. So let's move on to making it. So the way that I'm gonna make it is I'm gonna pull out my door template that I had from earlier, and I'm going to start gluing craft sticks to it. I'm gonna let all of the edges run long, that's okay. Because what I'm gonna do is actually go in with a Dremel tool and cut all of those edges off using that template that I had as a guide. Now with that done, I'm gonna take and make little handles. I'm gonna use the copper wire that I got from my mystery craft box and I'm going to bend that into the shape of handles. I'm gonna drill holes down into those for those to drop down into place. And then once that's done, I'm gonna take paper and I'm going to make brackets. These are gonna be, you know, the black iron brackets, you know, that hold the door pieces together from the outside. Pretty simple. I'm not gonna glue this into place just like I didn't glue the uh, bell tower into place yet, specifically because I'm gonna be painting those in a separate way than the rest of the piece, and I want the opportunity to not have to worry about getting it onto my phone. So with that done, let's look at what this thing looks like at this stage, and then I'll start talking to you for the outro of the video. So here we are at the end of this particular episode. I definitely wanted to do this all in one week, but I just kept adding pieces and adding pieces and adding pieces and eventually got to the point that I realized I was just gonna have to split this up into two videos. Oh well, I mean, it is what it is. I'm not too terribly worried about it and hopefully you all are enjoying the journey. I've noticed I have a tendency to build bigger than I have a time frame for. The most grand thing that I could make, you know, end up making a full chapel here instead of just making a little tiny hut or something. But I'm really happy with where it is at this stage and I can't wait to start getting paint on it. Paint and all of the final details is gonna be what next week's episode is about, so I'm very excited about that. I'm gonna be excited to see all of this kind of transform and really come to life and obviously the doors and stuff, the windows, all that mess. It'll be a really, really good time, I think. But but if you enjoyed this video, definitely leave me a like down below. Leave me a comment and let me know. Do you like this series? Maybe something that I didn't use that I should have, or do you think that I went way too easy allowing myself to use foam? I'd just like to hear what you all think about this particular series. If you have not subscribed to the channel, definitely do that. That goes a long way to helping the channel out. And hit the notification bell if you want to know when our videos go live every week, which is Thursdays Eastern Standard Time at noon. But that's all I've got for this week. Until next week, all I can say is, I'll be seeing you.